Hello everyone, how's it going? Harrison Singer here once again from the Juice Lounge. Honestly, the one and only Juice Lounge. I feel like that term is well earned because we have yet another special guest sitting with us. I'm sitting across from the one and only Buddy Beheim. Buddy, how's it going? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for having me. How's your day been? It's going well. Uh, got a workout in. Absolutely. Uh, you know, just finished up classes, so just enjoying that, taking some downtime. Uh, my brother was here last night, so hung out with him for a little and just, you know, trying to enjoy the little downtime that, that I get every now and then. Say less. No, I yeah. feel you big times. That's you said you were with your brother last night. He's obviously, I mean, that news broke not too long ago and made waves. He's going to be here next year playing with you. How excited are you about that? I can't wait, man. Uh, ever since I was a kid, you know, we used to go at it. Uh, he never <laughs> let me win in anything. It ended up in a fight, whatever it was. Uh, it got to the point where... My parents didn't let us, you know, play basketball against each other, whatever it was, because it would end up in a fight. So, you know, we got really close over the years and uh, just really excited uh, to, to get a, to play with him, share the court with him. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know he wore three with Cornell. You have 35 locked down already yeah. because, you know, <laughs> that's, uh, that's yours. But does he have an idea, I guess, what number he's going to be wearing next year? Yeah, I think he, he wanted to wear two. But uh, he's not sure yet. Um, he's he's gonna you know think about it. He he doesn't want to wear three because a G Mac. You know that's you gotta show your respect to to one of the greats. But um, he's still thinking about it. But it, it'll probably be a process for them. He really cares about you know all of that stuff. I don't. I'm cool with whatever. But 35 just came naturally for me. Obviously, I had to know because your dad wore that back in the 60s when he <laughs> back, was playing. Yeah, back in the day. How did he originally gravitate to it back in the day? I don't even know. I never asked him that. Actually, a funny story is is that he wore 21. In high school, um, that was his number always. And uh, when I was growing up, I loved 21. I didn't know why. And then you know he told me like, oh, I wore that in high school too. And then you know I was like, right, I gotta keep this this tradition going with the 35. So that kind of just happened like that. But you know, no one really knows that. They're always like, oh, you wear it because of KD back in the day. <laughs> but nah, uh, my man Jim Beheim back in the si <laughs> back in the 60s yeah. it was getting buckets. Just say that seems like the obvious link 35 nowadays with KD. Yeah. Right, you know. But yes, we definitely covered your brother who's coming here. I know in addition to your brother, though, Jimmy Jr., you have, I guess, a sister or two as well, right? So what's, what's your relationship like with your sister? How's that? Yeah, How's yeah. That? so I got an older sister, a stepsister, Elizabeth, right. who's in her 30s living in Montana, uh, and she comes up every year or so, and we're very cool. She's not into sports, you know, she's like 5'2", five, 5'3", five, <laughs> so she never got into basketball, but... um. She's a great, great sister. And then I got a twin sister, uh, Jamie, who's uh, played basketball her whole life. She was always taller than me growing up, always. She was 5'11 in like seventh grade, and, and she hated it, but we were very close. So me and her were always really tight and uh, would gang up on my brother every now and then. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we're very close. So i uh, just uh, been lucky enough to have two really good siblings. I don't mean to put you on the spot here too much, but there's a lot of firepower in the Beheim household, it seems, as far as the children aspect goes. So not to put too much pressure on you here, you know, especially if your mom might come around and watch this, your dad, but who would your parents probably say, objectively speaking, is the golden child out of all you guys? <laughs> that, that's kind of, that's, I'm going to go with me. Uh, that's that's <laughs> actually an easy one. Dang, uh, man, it's easy. Okay. That's an easy one. They'll probably say the same thing. Uh, growing up, my sister was always getting in fights with my mom, and my brother <laughs> was always, you know, he was always doing his own thing, so he was kind of quiet and, and kept to himself. But it, actually, in, in 2008, 2009, I think, I, you know, I, I was always the best child, so I was like, you know, when, when am I going to get my reward? And I got to go to the Big East tournament. And that was the year that they played UConn in the six overtime. Oh God, so that was, that was a pretty good reward. And uh, I was at that game crying, sweating. <laughs> I was just going, I was probably eight or nine. And uh, just remember that game like it was yesterday. Uh, my favorite game ever. And uh, one of the great memories I have growing up. So that kind of brings me right to a question I had for you was you're, you're a Syracuse life, all right? You're born and raised in <laughs> yeah. nearby Fayetteville. Yeah. So you went yeah. to. Jamesville, do it high school. Yeah, JD. And you went, I guess, like after you graduated, you spent a year at Br Brewster, yeah. Brewster Academy, obviously, one of my good friends who's with us right now goes here, Noah. But yeah. Brewster Academy in New Hampshire, what, I guess, first went into that decision to go away from home, right? Because, yeah. I mean, like I said, a Syracuse lifer. And, I mean, what was it like being away from home? What went into the decision to do in the first place? And I guess, looking back on it, was it rewarding or not? Yeah, definitely. It was actually after my junior year of high school. So I had a really good junior year really good year uh, playing uh, on the EYBL circuit with City Rocks and uh, 
I just kind of, you know, took off. I had shot the ball really well. And uh, the coach at Brewster came, Coach Smith came up to me after one practice and told my dad that, you know, he'd want me to come play there. And my dad was all, well, he was freaking out. He's like, you know, that's the best prep school in the country. Uh, Donovan Mitchell went there. Mm -hmm. uh, just they've got had about 15 pros play there. So it's as good as it gets. So we jumped on it right away. There's a no brainer. Um, but it was tough, definitely living away from home. I've grew up here my whole life. Syracuse basketball was my life. So I think the biggest thing was knowing that I was going to go and play with eight or nine Division One players every day and uh, get better and, and know that I'd end up back at Syracuse. So yeah. it was all worth it. I made some great friends, great memories, and uh, played a lot of good against a lot of good players. So it was a really good experience. Oh, yeah, say that. But yeah. I, was, I was wondering, too, I mean, was there ever any sort of moment, possibility at all that – Buddy Beheim could have ever maybe ended up elsewhere playing college <laughs> ball, even a second. No, I don't even think, I don't think so, <laughs> that man. That settles that. Maybe, maybe if I got in a fight with my parents or something, I'd be like, I'm not, you know, I'm not coming here. No way I'm dealing with you guys. But uh, Ever since I was a kid, it was my brother growing up, always his dream school was North Carolina. And really? I just couldn't even look at him. I wouldn't even talk to him when he'd talk about that. And uh, he just, you know, Michael Jordan, obviously all the great players that played there, but I could never, you know, respect that growing up. Was but, this uh, before, though, the ACC move where like, this he was, was before, idolizing this was, North Carolina? Yeah, he was probably 10 or 11, 12. So when Syracuse joined the ACC, was that the end of that? And yeah, now obviously. Like, Shut up, when <laughs> don't we, do that anymore. When we got older, he was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it changed definitely. I think he just loved the hype of Carolina growing up. But um, I was always, you know, Syracuse basketball, if we lost the game, I would be crying or whatever. It would be a scene. <laughs> like, I was all Syracuse basketball was my life. So. Mm -hmm. When I, it was just if I could play or not. If I was good enough, you know, I was never the best player growing up. I had to, you know, work hard and get there. And eventually I got good enough where I realized I could play here. And I didn't know if I would be a role player or whatever it was. I just wanted to, you know, wear that uniform. So, you know, I would have came here as, you know, a walk on and never touched the court or even a manager. I didn't care. <laughs> I, this is all I know. And uh, just to be able to play here is, is a dream come true. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, at least from the looks of it, it seems to have worked out, you know, at least as far as the, uh, the, the numbers from the ACC and NCAA tournament from this past season go. But we're definitely going to hit a lot more when we come back. Probably shifting even further you know, off the court, talk some music, some lifestyle, some movies, like I said before. But we're sitting here with Buddy Beheim at the Juice Lounge. Be sure to follow us at Z89TheJuice on Instagram and Twitter. We will be right back. How's it going, everyone? We are back. Harrison Singer, Buddy Beheim. You're listening to The Juice on Central New York's Party Station. We were just talking, I mean, we were really a little all over the place, honestly. In yeah. the I think in the one of the best ways possible. We did touch on basketball stuff. That's why it's a lot of people around these parts probably know you from the stuff you do on the court. But I want to go in a completely different direction here. Uh, I want to know, like, from start to finish, and perhaps oftentimes during days that does include basketball, but I was curious to know, like, what an average, just normal day in the life, you know, start to finish looks like for, mm -hmm. for Buddy Beheim. Yeah, man, a little, little bit of everything. Obviously, I like to, you know, have fun and enjoy myself off the court. But, you know, every day uh, during the week, during the morning, I usually try to get my work in pretty early, you know, 7 or 8, get done, you know, around 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. And lately I've been golfing a lot. I got, you know, my teammate Marek Dolajai <laughs> into that. He's he struggles, but uh, he has fun and he enjoys it. He's getting better. So we, we picked up that a lot recently. And uh, I also like to, I'm a big fisher guy, so mm. I go fishing a, you know, a good amount. We got a couple of spots around here. Uh, me and my dad will go every now and then or a friend. And I also just like spending time at home, going home whenever. My mom always wants me there. And we just got a dog uh, for Christmas. So what'd you name it? What kind it, of dog? His name is Bean, Bean after Kobe. Yeah. And uh, he's a multi poo. So mm. he's a He's Small, a good dog. Yeah. yeah, he's it's funny. My dad will take him out and and he'll end up, you know, getting walked by Bean. Bean will just run around and it's it's hilarious. So, he's a good dog. Ball energy uh, like a coffee bean. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's got crazy energy, that's for sure. That's but good. uh yeah, it's just uh, trying to enjoy the little downtime we get and, you know, like to do other stuff as well. So, so as far as other stuff, I know movies. I'm curious to know what some of your favorite movies are. And I'll ask you about that, but I guess first, what's the morning routine like, you know, first when you wake up mm -hmm. in the morning before practice, I guess? 
Yeah, during the season, uh, I mean, depending on classes, obviously with that, it's, you know, wake up, go to class, try to, you know, get a lift in before mm-hmm. practice, uh, get to practice early, get shots up, uh, shoot after for a little, whatever mm-hmm. it is. During the season, I'm very focused on that, but... What music are you... Are you I'm assuming you have music? Yeah, always, always. Uh, for workouts, Big Meek Mill guy, mm-hmm. um, Lil Baby, I think that's probably my favorite right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cuse guy, Scory, mm-hmm. uh, Tusi, yeah. yeah, shout out Scory, absolutely, um, and yeah, Tusi for sure. Yeah, Those definitely. Guys are killing yeah, they're the blowing right up. Now, yeah. They're blowing up. Uh, yeah. It's awesome to see. But uh, Drake's oh, my all-time favorite. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's you know he's the goat. Um, Jay Z, he still got it a little. That's, he's on DJ Khaled's yeah. album. He he had a couple bars. Mm-hmm. Um, Jay Z's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's all right. He actually. <laughs> He, uh, I played with his, um, his nephew in AU. So he really? pulled, he pulled up to one of our games, and it was the craziest, probably one of the craziest <laughs> things ever. And I think he said, "What's up to my dad?" And my dad was like, "Who is that?" And I was like, "No <laughs> you way!" Know, I was, was. Like, I, he he didn't realize <laughs> it took him a little to hit him, but yeah, he didn't realize for a minute. But uh, it was just crazy that he was at our game. So that was that was cool. I wouldn't know what to do. If yeah, Jay-Z was watching me play basketball. I, I hear, you know, like from. Times where the Laker games or big city games on like someone like Rihanna, for instance, shows up to one of those games. The players like it's always a lower scoring game, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean, than it would have been. Yeah, they're fo- they're not as much focused on the game. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he was our, my teammate was telling us, yeah, he's my uh, my uncle. Wait, and we just didn't believe him. Then there he is, and you know you gotta believe him that's, after that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it was, so, it was awesome. Mean, after practice, I guess sometimes some of the things you like to do. I mentioned now at this point, maybe. Semi, semi a broken record, but movies, right? Yeah. What movies? What What are we talking here? I think the people have been waiting long enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big into movies now. I just, you know, started watching a lot of uh, the Marvel like series. Mm. I try watching that in order. Um, the whole MCU is that your plan? The whole, to yeah. Get I'm oh, yeah. trying to. I'm struggling right now, but I think <laughs> I'm like so eight or nine. There's so many. It's a lot of um, material. Big sports guy, you know, Space Jam is one of my favorites, like Mike. Um, I know you name dropped Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank well, Redemption right, is a so classic. Yeah, it's yeah. a classic. I watched that in high school, and I, you know, I, f- I love the movie. Uh, great actors. Morgan Freeman is one of the best. Um, love Denzel Washington. Uh, hmm. Got into Harry Potter, actually, over quarantine. That was the next one. Yeah. That's right where I was going. Yeah. Uh, my brother was telling us, that, like, over quarantine, like, you got to watch these movies. So we watched them as a family, and my dad didn't like them at all. He's more of an action guy yeah. and that stuff. So he thought it was a little boring, but... You know, I really liked it. Thought it was good. So it's funny. Yeah, I, I got it. Got big into Harry Potter. So the I've never watched the Harry Potter movies. So like They're that's good. something. Yeah. In my house, it's a huge thing. Like my my siblings, my parents are, are all over it. What is it about it? Like that that hits so hard for so many people. <laughs> would you say? Yeah, I didn't. I never was into it. Yeah, I'm like, no way, I'm gonna like these movies. But uh, it gets good. <laughs> it's kind of like a mystery. Like you don't know what's gonna happen and. Uh, they're just classic movies, Absolutely. I guess. So you got to, you know, it's a good series, really good series. The amount of times lately, especially, I've heard of people watching Harry Potter telling me to get into it. A few very special people, you know, told me. So <laughs> yeah, you I'm it. always down to expand the repertoire. Yeah, there you go. But any other spare time activities worth mentioning? I know we, we covered golf, we covered movies. And, you know, Friends has always been a big thing. Going home, seeing the fam, all that. But like, what else, you know? Is there anything else specifically, I guess? Ah, man, uh... Phew. Not, you know, swimming, big in the mm. swim, like, you know, messing around the pool, whatever it is. Um, I'm big into, you know, spike ball, can jam, mm-hmm. those type of games, uh, those are fun. you know, where you can just play, yeah, get competitive. You go to the beach and play them at all anywhere? Like, yeah, like when we go on vacation, right. definitely, but we don't have a ton of spots. We usually go to actually our turf, like football field at mm. our high school, and we get like four nets and, and play a little tournament. That's so fun. that gets that gets competitive, but. Yeah, just, you know, doing whatever it is, football outside, all, all that stuff. I know some people listening live right now might be interested to hear, I guess, about the school side. It's fun or it's not fun. You don't have to answer as it may be for you. But I know you're a sport management major, right, in yeah, Falk? And, yeah. I mean, you, you said you're a big sports guy. It makes seems to make sense, at least not to try and judge a book by its cover, yeah. right, with you in sport management. But how have you been enjoying, I guess, the, the curriculum, the life of an SPM major on campus? <laughs> nah, uh, school, Syracuse is the best school. Um, obviously, with COVID, it was tough this year. Uh, you know, for about seven months, I felt like I was locked in my room and just, you know, basketball was the only thing. But uh, once the season ended, you know, I was like, I'm going to enjoy myself for a little. Uh, we, you know, we all deserve it just after the long year we had and the success we had in the in the postseason. So, just enjoying, you know, the the nightlife, whatever you want to call it, sure. and uh, 
you know, just having fun with teammates, friends, uh, meeting new people. For sure. uh, so you got to always have a balance, I think. And, uh, you know, Syracuse is a great place to, to find that balance. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we're going to head into break and just said, but I have one question. Swinging right back to the artist stuff. You mentioned Drake. Drake is huge, obviously. Mm-hmm. I, I would ask this about Lil Baby. But I am really curious because when it comes to Drake and this question, I feel like it's almost telling as a person at this point. But what is your favorite Drake record, you would say? <sighs> Man, and if it's too tough. hard to give a song or two, three songs, that's tough, you can yeah. drop you know, a body of work on yeah, me. Okay. But I am curious to know. That's, that's tough, man. I've been, I love Drake. Um, Tuscan Leather is the one that <laughs> comes out right away. Um, on, that's, that's a classic. Yeah. Um, that's real tough. We've been showing Drake so much love on these interviews, honestly. Maybe, yeah, maybe one day he'll be top. He's got, <laughs> yeah, he's got to pull up the cues. Run, get him yeah. to, he was actually supposed to come to a game uh, last year or something when you know, Tom Brady pulled up. Yeah, and with Fal- Jimmy Fallon. Adam, yeah. Adam Weitzman was talking to him, and mm-hmm. he was going to get him here, but that's definitely down the road. We're mm-hmm. going gonna to get him up to the Dome. That would be a lot of fun. Show him a good time That'd in Syracuse. Yeah. I see there's a picture of him. I think it's not. I don't think it's edited. Like. It's really him wearing a, is it Sir, that Syracuse sweatshirt photo. So yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, we'll, yeah, get, so we'll get him up here. So the idea, you know, let let it matriculate, let it happen. You know, put it out there, see what see what happens down yeah, the road. But definitely. absolutely, you're listening to the Juice on Central New York's Party Station. Harrison Singer, Buddy Beheim here. We will be back for one last segment. Stay tuned. How's it going, everyone? We are back on the Juice. Harrison Singer here. Buddy Beheim sitting right across from me, and we're. Back at it for part three. Sure. I think we've hit the subject of Buddy Beheim pretty hard, yeah. I think, you know, yeah, adequately yeah. so far, the first two. But I'm really, really excited for this third part because we're going to do a little thing that we've never personally done with uh, any interview guests. But I guess the best way to put it is a little superlatives game that we got coming up. It's, you know, I'll ask you a few quick questions with some quick answers. They might have to do with the SU basketball team, they might have to do directly with you, Buddy Beheim. Like, who knows? We're going to get creative with it, um, and I think we're going to have some, some, some fun, <laughs> safe to say. Anyways, I guess without any further ado, should we get right to it? Let's do it. Let's do it. First question I got for you. Funniest teammate on the SU basketball team or teammates if just one yeah. is too hard? I mean, John Bull comes right up to Thanks. mind. Uh, he's you know as funny as it gets just with anything. Yeah. Um, and a close second, I'm going to go with Marek, Marek Doja. He's, he's hilarious. Um, Maybe because his English isn't quite there yet. He's still got a little lapse there, but uh, he's also just a funny teammate and a funny dude. So those two come up to mind right away. That's good to know. That's good to know. Maybe we'll get Merrick through one time before (laughs) before he's outie, but we did get John through. And I mean, I can attest to everything you just said about John, you know, in and out of the interview for sure. Yep. Next question I got, best and worst dressed on the team. That's good. Worst right away, I'm going to go. Ah man, I might go bull for that because he, you know, he he doesn't care what he wears. When he wants to put together a fit, he can, but he'll wear pajamas to practice or something, or just mm-hmm. you know he'll wake up and and it looks like you know he just threw on whatever he was in his closet that <laughs> morning. So he's worst dressed, best dressed. Ah, oh, that's tough too. Um, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I mean, he's leaving us, but my man Quincy dressed pretty well, mm. so I'm gonna go Quincy. And I know his shoe game is. Yeah, his shoe game yeah, is. Yeah, Elijah Hughes. That. Elijah Hughes That's was up yeah. there. He's the best shoe game, and then Q followed in his footsteps. I'm actually, I was impressed because Quincy literally would say, like, I mean, not to shoot the shit or anything like that, but he, he's a man with faith in himself for sure. You know what I mean? So when I heard him say that EJ, I guess, is the number one when you know Elijah was still on the team, that he gave him the crown and admitted that he was the runner up when it came to the the kick yeah. game. Yeah. That meant to me, dang, like, <laughs> yeah, EJ's shoe lot, game yeah. is something it, it's else. It's crazy, yeah. His shoe game is out of, you know, he just, he would wear a, sh- a pair of shoes and warm-ups just to get some pictures in them, and he <laughs> wouldn't wear them in the game. He'd just get them for pictures. Just but for the flicks. You know, he'd say, it, there would be, you know, uncomfortable shoes, but he wouldn't care. He just wanted, <laughs> he wanted the pics in them, so. You look good, you play good. In, yeah, I guess, he, he did play confidence good. Confidence-wise. <laughs> yeah, he did play yeah, he good. He did, he definitely did. Versatile, filled in right, when you guys needed help down low, especially. Yeah, yeah he was great. But switching gears a bit, who would you say on the team has the best and worst music taste? That's good, too. Uh, that's tough. Um, best music taste? I mean, uh, I'm up there, I'd say. <laughs> um, I'm tapped into just about everything. Uh, I'm going to go with... Um, uh, that's good. 
my guy uh, Frank Anselm. He's he's a big Kanye West guy, so mm. I, I like that. He's always playing the classics. So I'm gonna go him for you know another best best taste, and then worst taste. I'm gonna go. Oh, that's good too. I'm gonna go with my guy. Um, my guy Chris Laval. He's always you know he's he plays good music, but he he loves uh you know early '90s and 2000s rap, and I can respect that. But I'm a Drake guy, so mm-hmm. I gotta I gotta have have his back there. Mm-hmm. I feel you. I mean, I don't want to, I'm never going to endorse, you know, pooping on 90s hip hop. Nah, you know yeah, they're, I mean? so, great. I still they're feel, so great ones. <laughs> I definitely still feel you. So this one might be uh, you know, one that you really have to think about, but I'm curious to hear this one. But which teammate would you not want to see date your sister? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's actually a good one. There's, you know, there's definitely a big list up there for that one. Uh, there's a few that I would let probably, but um, the last person I'd let, man, I don't want to say bull again. But oh, no. I might have to go oh, bull there. Um, Tough crowd. Bull is a good dude, but I don't know about. I don't know if I could let that slide. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go with bull. You never, you never know with him. So I'm oh, gonna go John Bull. That's so funny. Oh, he's. Oh, I don't mean to ignite any beef between the two of you. <laughs> I know. Nah, so, boy, I love you if you're watching this. You're my guy. You're my yeah, I'm guy. I'm assuming he will see it. So, you know, and, and hey, I'm showing love to Bull, too. I'm not endorsing any slander. <laughs> Just want to get that out there. Great interview guest, for sure. But both of you are. So I have no bias to this <laughs> whatsoever. Next question I do have, though. Who do you think on the team will have the most success off the court? That's good. That's a good one. Um... I'm gonna go with uh, Barama Sidibe. Mm. Uh, he's you know he's smart. He he has the best GPA on the team, mm. and he speaks four languages. Uh, he's you know he's a people person. He knows you know what he's doing, and he's really smart. So I'm gonna go with him. And so I'm going now. I guess from the basketball team back to just Syracuse in general. But what would you say your favorite summertime or off season activity is to do when the season's not going on in Syracuse? That's a good one. Uh, I'm always, you know, I love a day of spending the day fishing, mm-hmm. uh, golfing, and, you know, spike ball is definitely up there. So that's my top three, definitely, or, you know, playing poker, playing cards, whatever it is. How about your favorite food spot or restaurant in town? Ooh, that's, oh, man, uh, probably going to go there tonight, a pizza. Mm. That's, you know, best, I think best pizza in Q's for sure. I'm a big pizza guy. A lot of people love to float around all different places when it comes to top pizza places here. There, yeah. there could be a, a serious debate, debate I think, yeah. about yeah. it, you know. Twin Trees is up there, Mario mm-hmm. and Salvo's. Uh, Utica Pizza is really good. Are it's you a not, Pepino's guy at all? Like, yeah, I've had, yeah, that's definitely good, mm-hmm. yeah. Growing up, I had that a lot, you know, growing up because I'd play near there, so, right. yeah. There you go. I'm sure you've seen pretty much every corner of town at this point. Yeah, yeah. just uh, think so. Absolutely, absolutely. So, this one, I guess, hopping back to sports, but would you say you're more of a Jordan guy or a LeBron guy? Jordan guy. Um, mm. You know, just growing up, actually, I got to go. My dad would coach at his summer camp for, you know, fantasy camp. They'd have 40 to 50-year-olds playing it, right. and he'd get Roy Williams there, a bunch of college coaches, and every time I saw him, it was always, you know, he'd give me a hug or he'd pick us up, and he remembered, you know, m- me and my brother and my sister, so... He always showed love, and that stuck out to me growing up. And uh, my dad's a Jordan guy, so he might have brainwashed me a little. But <laughs> uh, going six for six is, you know, that's that's pretty incredible. And uh, you know, I, I think he's just a competitor. He's the best competitor there, there's ever been. Absolutely. You know, I hear that for sure. This one's taking another turn, though, and this one's probably out of all the hardest hitter. But Buddy Beheim, who is your celebrity crush? <laughs> That's actually an easy one. I'm gonna go with Zendaya. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I've, Zendaya. You got Euphoria, right? Drake. J- so, yeah. Oof, whatever yeah. Drake has a part of your, yeah. you're all about it. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. That's funny. That's an easy one. That's good. I think we hit that pretty hard. But that's all the time we have for you guys here on the Juice with Buddy Bayheim. Buddy, what can uh, on a parting note? What is the future you can say hold for Buddy Bayheim? I guess. As far as you wanted to, you know, to, to discuss, but 5, 10, 15 years or, you know, even tomorrow, if you want to yeah. take it there. Man, just, uh, you know, always enjoying every day, just having fun first and foremost, so, uh, you, you know, friends and family. But, uh, you know, as a player, hopefully playing for another 10 years, 15 years, as long as I can. If it's, you know, here or overseas, uh, just, you know, enjoying that. And uh, 
hopefully end up back here someday as mm-hmm. a coach or whatever it is. So yeah. I'll definitely assume, presumably, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I can speak for you when I say it. If an NBA opportunity were to arise, it doesn't matter what team it would be, you you know, <laughs> anywhere it would work, you know, appreciative of the opportunity, of course. But hey, I mean, if there are any teams that you're like, dang, like, Myself in that uniform, like, um, I wouldn't have a problem with that, yeah, you know? Is yeah, there anything yeah. that comes to mind for you? I'm going to go with the Knicks. Um, yes, I yeah. actually got to go. I mean, I grew up in MSG pretty much every year, mm-hmm. Big East tournament. So Why did you just see a Nets game? And I just, went, I I just was at a Nets game this week, yeah. and the energy was crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can just tell how much it means, Knicks basketball means to the fans, and uh, they got a good culture going. Absolutely. So New York definitely. basketball is popping yeah. right now. Yeah, New York's a good place to live right now. You got them in the Nets, and the Yankees are coming alive a little. So, hey, in the Mets. Are you, are you a Yankees guy? I'm a Yankees guy, guy. big Yankees Me guy. Too. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll try to catch a game every year. My Absolutely. dad. My dad's a big, big Yankees fan. Yeah, that's good. That's cool to know. I need. I need him to, to pick it up a little bit. You know, I'm a Jets fan. Okay, sorry so, about I mean, that. Yeah, building towards the future that. in football, but there needs to be some sort of offsetting for all the terrible yeah. that goes on on the gridiron for, <sighs> yeah. for my Jets. You need so, to have some, some type of enjoyment. It. Yeah. We need Zach it Wilson, sure. hopefully, he'll, he'll, he should be pretty good. But. <sighs> the amount of times I've just crossed my fingers when someone says, yeah, I'm full of hope. But. Mark Sanchez and all those guys, you never know. Darnold. We did Darnold so dirty. Yeah, he, he, had, he, he was talented. He just didn't have much help at all. What's your football team? I'm a Tom Brady guy, so I get a lot of crap for it, but uh, I've always been always been Tom Brady. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, he came up to a game. I got to talk go, to you him. You follow him? Yeah. Right. So, I, yeah, I kind of went with him to Tampa, Tampa Bay, yeah, but – you know, I'm a player guy, so. Did you see Jeter? I think he just sold. He was staying at Derek Jeter's house when, um, like, for the season, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I just saw Jeter sold the house that he rented out to Brady for the season for, like, $22, 23000000 million. Or could have even been more than that. Like yeah, this I, mansion. I believe it. Yeah, I believe it. Absolutely. Is that someone you ever gotten to meet or come in close? Jeter? To yeah, I actually did, but I was young. When, so when we went to a Yankees game, uh, we got really good seats. Uh, my dad kind of knew Joe, Joe Torre, so he came up to – he talked to us for about 20 minutes. Cool. Uh, Giambi picked up my brother, took him on the field. Um, Mariano Rivera came mm-hmm. and talked to him for a little uh, – a Rod's the only guy that wouldn't, wouldn't come over and talk to us, but Jeter came, Too everyone much. else. Yeah, he's a little – yeah, he's a little too cool for that, I guess. But everyone, you know, showed love, and it was, you know, my dad still talks about that that day, day to this to this day. Absolutely. So, I mean, we are in the days of NIL and everything like that, talking to an athlete. This is always, you know, how I end off interviews. But athlete-specific, I'm going to harp on that in celebration. Where can the people find you on social media? Plug all your stuff, you know, where they can find you and stay up to date, you know, oh, yeah, on, yeah. on your life uh, and what you got going on. Buddy underscore Bayheim uh, is my Instagram. Uh, Twitter's Buddy underscore Bayheim35, I'm pretty sure. And, yeah, I'm not going to give out my Snapchat or anything. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you know, follow me on Instagram, whatever it is. Uh, I'll show some love back. Absolutely. You heard it here first. Harrison Singer, The Juice, with Buddy Bayheim from The Juice Lounge. As far as the sports fans go out here, and then these local parts. What else can we give you? Seriously, we're killing it out here for y'all. Yes, sir. But uh, be oh, sure God. to follow us on Instagram at Z89TheJuice, Twitter as well. Subscribe to the YouTube. That's where the video version of this interview will be. So for those whipping it, you know, or just listening on the radio live on WJPZFM, check out the YouTube channel because that's where our full video version will be with Buddy Beheim. Anyways, thank you for spending time with us, Central New York and beyond. You have. Any last party messages for the people, buddy? Uh, uh, no, man. Just, you know, go Q's. Uh, next year is going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Say that for sure. See you guys later. Yo, what's up? It's Buddy Beheim. I'm here with Harrison Singer, and you're listening to The Juice on Z89.